Welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. Now in our last build we went sci-fi when we built the blunderbuss from the movie Looper. Uh, and if you missed that build we're going to include the link in the description below to our channel's homepage so you can go over there and check out Looper or uh, any of the other super cool builds we have there. Now for this build we're going to go video game. So without further ado, Black Sheep Props would like to introduce you to the newest member of the family. <laughs> wow. Whoosh, whoosh. Check it out. Big and huge and animated and chunky. It is the Broilers Cleaver from Dota 2. That's right. And uh, way back you saw us do the Broilers Hook from Dota 2, so if you build both, you can have uh, two-fisted fun with your cleaver and your hook. Um, so, look at this thing, man. Same handle as the hook we did. Got the diamond-shaped detail at the back. It's wrapped, real simple. It's got this big, chunky base here, and then the blade. And uh, the blade's got the cool taper all the way along it, and we've got a bunch of big hacks and tally marks on there from the people you've thumped um, and it's got the cool orange and yellow looking sort of glow thing in there like we did on our hook and it's super stable um, really thick easy and fun all right so in this episode making an EVA foam broilers cleaver we're going to go step by step through how to build it seal it and paint it and uh, if you want to build along with us, we have a template. So we'll include the link in the description below to our storefront. So you can go grab a template if you want. Or don't. Just hang out and watch. That's cool too. Um, all right, man. If you're ready to hit it, let's make something. Okay, here we go. We're going to start building our cleaver. This should be super easy. All right, we're going to come in with two 18 millimeter pieces of foam. If you have a 36, that's fine, but I don't have a 36 on hand right now. So I'm going to take two 18s and I'm going to bulk it up. Okay, there we go. Now we've got both pieces cemented. Now you know the drill with contact cement. You've seen us do it a million times. Coat both sides, let it dry completely, and then it can make contact. All right, make sure we make good contact across the whole surface. You saw us use our glue pot to apply all the contact cement. There's several ways you can do it. You can do it that way, or you can pour the glue out in a huge puddle and use a big brush, like a paintbrush, and get it coated. It's whatever you like. Um, so there we go. Okay, now we've got these 10 millimeter pieces. We're gonna knock these off. We can use our box cutter for our long straight cuts. Don't fly by your hand at 100 miles an hour. You don't wanna take a thumb off. Okay, now we bring in our 18 millimeter piece and we're going to be attaching these to the back right here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to cut this square out on the bandsaw. Okay, there we go. There's our huge slab, our 36 millimeter. Now we're going to bring this in. We're going to line up the top and the side. Okay, now we bring this side over and we line that up. All right, give those a minute to dry. Right along our edge, right there and there. And then we'll line it up right down here perfectly and it's right inside our sharpie marks. That is beautiful. It's super easy.
Okay, we're flush at the top. Now we're going to lay down flush down this side right here. Okay, we always say, you know, don't just drop it down. We have to look over here and bend our foam in and make sure that we're lined up everywhere. There's our two step downs right there. And you might be saying, what the heck is that? Well, here comes where you can tell what it is. And that's right here. All right, there's our cut pattern. Now we're going to cut this out and transfer the line over and then cut the blade out. All right, see that? Now you can tell what it is. All right, now we're gonna split our template apart so that it lays down properly. We're gonna cut right through there, and we're gonna cut right through there. Transfer our line. And right there. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna go over to the bandsaw and we're gonna knock it out. Okay, now we're going to spin it around and bring it right back into here. We're in good shape all the way around. It's hard. We've got a little tiny imperfection right here. We can fix that with the Dremel. And actually, we got a, we're a little bit off right up here at the front. See that right there? We're going to have to fix that. So we can go into the bandsaw and fix that. And we can use the Dremel back here to fix that. But that's not bad. All right. Let's go fix that real quick. Okay, there we go. Now it matches up here and here. And we knocked our end off so that everything lines up. That is a funky, big, giant, chunky, cartoony looking blade right there. Wow, that's thick too. Um, now we're gonna have to drill a hole through here so we can feed the scroll saw blade through there. And we're gonna cut that out now. All right, here we go. Making room for the scroll saw blade. That's enough to send the scroll saw blade through. All right, there we go. Pretty cool. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna round over the edge of this piece on both sides. So we've got our gloves on, we've got a dust mask on. You know what we always say, don't be a dumb dumb. Don't dremel and throw dust all over and breathe it up your nose and into your lungs. Wear a dust mask if you're gonna grind foam. Okay, there we go. We rounded the edge off all the way around the piece. Just makes it look more finished. Very cool. All right. Okay, here we go. We took the little strip off of our template. We transferred our line over to both sides. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to make a, a peak to this blade. All right, now it's gonna come right up to the center here where these two 18 millimeter pieces of foam met. So we don't even have to draw a line. Actually, we could draw a line just to help us. All right, there we go. Now we have our mark. We're going to be making a bevel from this center peak right there, right down the middle up to this peak, all the way around our blade, and then we're going to flip it around and we're going to go from this line to that peak so we've got a nice taper. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start up here at the front 
And what we're going to do is we're going to use our box cutter and we're going to cut a bunch of this corner off so it saves us some dremeling time. We're going to start here and we're going to go slow and we're going to carefully cut a bunch of our corner off. So it's, all right, now go slow because you're going towards your hand. And right there. Okay, that's it. Now we're just going to continue down here, but we're going to stop before we reach the back end because the back end needs to stay square. So we're probably going to go to right about here. Let's draw our line around and there. Okay, so now we know that's where we want to stop with our bevel. Okay. And we're going to come right out where our line is, just like that. You definitely take your time on this, saw back and forth. Right there at our mark. See how we did that? All right, now we've got our blade already semi-shaped out, okay? Okay, now we got our dust mask on and we're gonna start smoothing this out to be a nice peak. All right, there we go. We've got a rough taper. Pretty nice. And we're gonna still continue to clean that up a little bit. And notice how we just faded it off here. Now we'll really fade it with our smoother bit. But there you go, that's kind of the basic way you do it. We're gonna go ahead and finish this side. Then we're gonna do this side. All right, there we go, check it out. We've got a flat top. Our blade comes to a peak. Look at that. Nice. All right, now we tapered it off here because we want it square at the back. That's still a little bit rough, but it's shaped out nicely. Okay, we're going to come in with our standing sticks. We're going to take our 80 grit. Let's get this dust mask off. Whew, I can breathe finally. All right, we're going to take our 80. And we're Pretty nice. Now we're going to come in with our 220, and that's a little bit finer grit. There we go. That's turning out pretty smooth. Wow. All right, now we're gonna get in here with our, our 80 grit, and we're gonna try to clean it up just a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna tighten this whole thing up with some heat. All right, there we go. That is a funky shaped blade. We've got the taper here, very cartoony. We've got the taper on the bottom. It's square at the back and it kind of tapers up toward the front. That's pretty cool. Okay, here's a leftover piece of eight millimeter foam. We're gonna pop out two rivets. 
Wow, that goes right through there when it's sharpened. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna pop on a dust mask and we're gonna round these over with our Dremel. All right, there we go, it's rounded. Now let's tighten it up with some heat. Bottom's all wet. We're gonna bring it in and center it right in there, like that. All right, we're drawing some marks on our blade just like that. All right, we've got the, we're gonna have gouges down here and we're gonna have tally marks crossed in here and some more gouges and we're gonna do it on both sides. Okay, now this is really easy. All right, we're gonna come in with our knife and we are going to stick it in on an angle and we're gonna come right through to our end piece. Then we're gonna spin it around and we're gonna start at that end with our blade on an angle and we're gonna come all the way down to the tip, just like that. And then what comes out is a little V-cut. And look at that, that's a really nice natural looking gouge. All right, let's do that on this side. Coming from the other side on an angle, and just like that. And there you go, beautiful gouges. Now just take your time and go through all these, and on this side too. Okay, look at that. Going around the edge, that's legit. Perfect, wow. I'll just keep going. Now we're going to start to build these circular details that are going to go on both sides. That's a 10 millimeter and a couple six millimeters. So we're going to start with the six millimeters and we're going to cut these little windows out. Just like that. Now we're going to cut them all out and then we're going to cut the squares out. So we've got the clean areas down in there. Now we're going to cut these circles out on the bandsaw. Okay, now we're tracing a circle around our vents, just a little bit bigger than our vents, and our plastic dip can is perfect. All right. Okay, we drew a line at the bottom. Now we're going to round over right to that line, and then we're going to do a bevel around the bottom. All right, we're going to start with our rough bit. Make sure you have your dust mask on. Pretty nice. Nice soft sculpt. Now we're going to take off our rough bit. We're going to put our smooth bit on. We're going to clean it up. Okay, that is nice. We got a little bevel along the bottom edge. We got the nice rounded top. 
Now let's come in with our 80 grit sandpaper. Nice. Now we're coming with the 220. That's a little bit finer. That'll really smooth it out. Oh yeah. Wow. Beautiful. That is really smooth. Sweet. All right, let's tighten it with some heat. All right, there we go. Tightened up pretty nice. Now we'll do all the same steps to this piece. One side at a time. All right, check that out. Super cool. Really easy to shape too. We've got the bevel at the bottom, so it's a little bit of a under tuck there, and then the rounded top. Okay, here's all the pieces that are going to make up our handle. 36 millimeter dowel and some 12 millimeter pieces. Okay, there we go, round the to top. Now we're gonna do the same thing on this one. Okay, now we're gonna start building our handle. All right, we've got this 36 millimeter dowel and we're gonna split it down the middle because we wanna put this support inside there. So we're gonna use a block. We've got double stick tape on here. Alright, there we go. Now we're going to slide this right up against there. Okay, now we've got it nice and stable. So when we go through the bandsaw, it's not going to roll on us. Alright, let's make our mark, but we're going to split it. There we go. Alright, there we go. Okay, now we're going to make a trench for our, our metal rod. Okay, there we go. Let's do our trench. Beautiful. Okay, that's probably all we need right there. Right, now we're going to be wrapping this so the seam isn't too big of a deal, but we could go in and just clean it up a little bit. There we go. Okay, now these are going to have to slide on here. And so we've got our center mark. We're going to drill a little hole. Okay, now we're going to make our hole a little bit smaller so that it's really tight fit. Sweet. Alright, so actually this one didn't need one. That's going to go on the end. This one needed one though. Alright, let's feed it through. Ooh, nice. Ooh, that's looking pretty centered right there. Same distance on both sides all the way around. That's not bad. Not... Okay, here we go. We're going to set it in there. Look to this side, and we're right smack dab in the middle. 
All right, there we go. Man, that is one solid handle, and I mean solid. Holy smokes. All right, now we're gonna drill our hole right in the middle of here. Okay, now we need a bit that's just a tiny bit longer than our rod. So that's just a hair longer, so we know our pilot hole is deep enough. All right, there's our center mark right there. There we go. <laughs> Hot dog, that's cool. Yeah, man, love it. And that's solid, so you can swing this thing around and um, you're not gonna have to worry about there just being a tiny little bit of glue holding this on to this. All right. Okay, now we're going to do the little diamond-shaped piece that goes on the very end of our handle. And this is made up of 12 millimeter foam. And these lines are very particular because we're going to be cutting these out and we are going to be attaching it together. Um, so we're going to tip this up. We're not going to lay it flat. We're going to stand it up on the edge and we're going to come through and we're going to the lines we have drawn there. Okay, and there's all four of our pieces. All right, now it may not be perfect. We might have to touch it up a little bit with the, with the Dremel, but. Okay, here we go. We're gonna try this, see what we get. Let's try to get it as perfect as we can get it. Ooh. That's not terrible. Because this is foam, we're going to really bend the heck out of it to get every single little edge to line up. Oh my gosh, look at that. Holy cow, this is all lined up here. This is lined up here, and these are lined up. Oh man. This is. There we go. Let's get this side pinched in. Ooh, another almost perfect miter. Wow, that's looking really great. Edges lined up. All right, that is pretty darn nice. Like we said before, really hard. This might be the hardest part of the whole build right here, geez. All right, let's come in with our Dremel. Let's get off some of this glue residue. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pick the worst corner, probably this one, just like that. Okay, now we have a nice flat bottom and we got rid of our worst corner and we're going to be able to stick that on there and it is going to look sweet. Let's make a mark. Okay, here we go. Our last piece. This is going to be our wrap that's going to go around our handle. It's a three millimeter piece. And we're going to wrap this like you wrap a baseball bat or a golf club. When you get to the end, it has to have a long taper on it. So we drew this long, we did a test here and that wasn't right. So here it is right here, this long taper. Now we've got this end, like I said, like a baseball bat. 
or a golf club. Now we can come in and lay it right like that. And as we wrap it, we're going to go right around our piece like that. And when we get to the end, we're going right here. All right, now we're going to take that same angle and we're going to cut it off just like that. super glue right on the end like that so, and we can get it started we're gonna get it anchored okay cool see that we're anchored now now it's gonna stay in place while we wrap this Just cover the whole strap and let it all dry, and then we wrap it. Now we don't want to stretch it because we already measured, so we just want to gently push it down as we go around. Okay, do not stretch it or we'll end up too long at the end. So as long as you are gently pushing, we should end up exactly where we wanted to be. Okay, just like that. There we go. Look at that. That matched up perfectly because we did not stretch it. All right now, what we're going to do is we left the end uncoated and we'll come in with our super glue. coating it. There we go. Wow, that's a swell wrap right there. Check that out. All right, the old golf club baseball bat technique to get the end on there. And then that sends us on the angle we want to go on. Really cool. Wow, this thing is cool. Big and chunky and man, it is solid with that metal rod in the handle. That is crazy solid. All right, there we go. That uh, pretty much is the last detail. With that uh, last little piece putting the wrap on our handle, that brings the build portion of our Dota 2 broilers cleaver to a close. All right, we're gonna begin painting our cleaver. We're gonna come in with our Tuscan Red and we're gonna paint most of this blade. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna mask off a straight line here because we want a super straight line. Go ahead. All right, now we, we stuck it on our shirt to get some of the glue off, okay? We don't want it to be too intense. We're gonna line up with the, all right. And we're going to get down in here where we can't reach with the sponge. All right, see that? We got a little bit too much adhesive on there. And we're pulling up a tiny bit of our plastic dip. All right. Tap down inside of our gap there. That's it. All right, see that? How we're leaving all the dark crevices? That's completely fine for what we want. Okay, now we're going to come in with our apple red, which is a brighter red. Just to make it a little bit brighter right down the middle of each wrap. Just keep running right down the middle. All right, there we go. Check that out. That oh so slight brighter red down the center. All right. All right, coming in with our silver. 
just make a straight line like that all the way down. All right, actually we changed our mind. We threw down a piece of painter's tape so we can use our sponge brush because the sponge brush puts the color down a lot more even than the actual brush. So. All right, that's the way you do it, right there. Should have done it that way from the start. Okay. Get a nice crisp edge right there. So the silver meets the red right along this curve. here on these little inner edges and we're going to cut in carefully All right, there we go. We've got all of our silver areas coated. All right, now we're coming with our orange color, which is pumpkin patch, in these little crevices right here, and we're gonna fill it with orange, all right? We don't have to be neat, because we're gonna be coming in with black after and cleaning it up. Sloppy, but it doesn't matter. All right, we're probably gonna go in and put a second coat on there after it dries. All right, now let's come in with our medium yellow. We wanna get the bright yellow right in the middle like that. Okay, now we're in good shape. Okay, now we wanna try to get this back in here. And we wanna try to fade it a little bit toward the edge. So we've got orange on the end and we've got yellow right in the middle, fading off a little bit. All right, All right now we're coming in with our satin black. All right, we got a little black on our blade there. Kind of a little bit sloppy. All right, there we go. We cut in around our black piece. We cut around the inside of our vents on both sides. Touched up where we got our black right there. All right, that thing's looking great. Now, we were going to decide if we were gonna be putting a mud wash over this whole thing to make it look weathered and aged, but I don't think we're going to. I think we're gonna leave it just like this. Um, we left some dark in the grip because we wanted it to look like that's been a little bit dirtied up over some time, but we're not gonna dirty the rest of this. Um, you can if you want, but we're not going to. All right, there we go, look at that. Man, that was an awesomely fun build, and the paint job was super easy. Um, so with that last detail, trimming in with our black and filling in our circles on both sides, that brings our Dota 2 Broilers Cleaver build to a close. That was it. Super easy. Not hard at all. Really easy build, really easy paint job. Uh, Probably the hardest part of the build was, man, it might have been these little circles because we had to kind of bevel the bottom so you could see up under there, and then we had to round the top over. Um, that was the hardest thing on there. This thing was easy. The rest was totally easy. We just wrapped our handle. We cut our little four pieces here. Uh, 
on an angle so that it went together like the miter of a picture frame. Not hard, but uh, you just gotta be careful. And then the big chunky blade was easy. Shaping it was really easy and doing the, the gouges and the tally marks was really easy too. Um, and the paint job, super easy. Um, sponged a bunch on, used a little bit of tape just to give us a straight line right along here. And uh, got a little creative with the glow area in there with the orange and the yellow. Not hard, it's not perfect, but it's not terrible. All right, there you go. Check that thing out, man. That's chunk. Wow. All right, so that concludes making an EVA foam broilers cleaver. Hope you liked it. If you did, give us a like, share us with a friend, and subscribe to this channel. And together we're going to go step by step through a lot more super cool builds so that you get the props you deserve. Thanks for coming. See you next time.